The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how you can conduct a Pearson correlation in SPSS and estimate the confidence intervals and, by implication, the statistical significance via bootstrapping. As I mentioned in the textbook, bootstrapping is an alternative estimation technique to normal theory estimation, which is what's used by default within most statistical programs, including SPSS. So to conduct the analysis, it assumes that you have the Bootstrap Utility or module installed. Click on Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate, put the Education variable and the Earnings per Day variable into the Variables box, and then the new portion that you need to do is Bootstrapping. Click on that. Click on Perform Bootstrapping. Keep the numbers of samples to 1,000 and then click on Bias Corrected Accelerated because research shows that the Bias Corrected Accelerated yields more accurate estimates. Click Continue and click OK. And what's going to happen is SPSS, you can see in the corner, I've got a very fast computer, did the 1,000 resamples to calculate the confidence intervals. And we can see that the correlation was estimated at 0.337. And this is the normal theory p-value over here, 0 0.033, that's the normal p-value. And the sample size is 40. And we can see here that we have a bias estimate, which is relevant to the bias in the standard error. And we have a standard error estimate of 0.178. Now finally, we have the bias corrected, 95% confidence intervals, which range from negative 0 0.063 to 0.64. Now, in the textbook, actually, let me just verify that. In the textbook, I ended up getting negative 0.035 and an upper confidence interval of 0 0.620. And the reason why it's slightly different is that SPSS uses a different series of samples of 1,000. So it's not going to be exactly the same samples of 1,000 resamples of size 40. Sample size is 40. So you will consistently get slightly different results based on your new collection of 1,000 resamples. But they will be very consistent in terms of interpretation and conclusions, typically. So in this case, the p-value was estimated at 0 0.033 in the context of normal theory estimation. And therefore, I rejected the null hypothesis. But in this case, the bias-corrected 95% confidence intervals actually intersected with zero. And therefore, that is not consistent with the normal theory estimation. I calculated the confidence intervals for this correlation earlier in the chapter, and they did not intersect with zero through normal theory estimation. This estimation, which is bootstrapping, which does not assume any level of normality in the data, is not supportive of the notion that the null hypothesis should be rejected the lower bound just barely intersected with zero. So because one confidence interval is negative and the other is positive, I can't reject the null hypothesis based on the bias-corrected accelerated confidence intervals. And all things equal, I would probably side with bootstrapping in most cases over normal theory estimation. Now it's a complicated affair as to when the results will be different to each other to the extent that you'll come to different conclusions. But as I write in the textbook, this isn't as different as it appears. It is the case that, yes, I can reject a null hypothesis here, and no, I can't here. But the truth is, I just barely rejected a null hypothesis here. It's just a little bit lower than 0 0.05. And this is just a little bit over the line of zero. So they're kind of converging. But you, this is the reality of real data, is where you might get some inconsistencies here. I then go on in the textbook and talk about randomization. And that is probably the best option here. 